so I've had this air raid siren control panel kicking around for a little while now so for perhaps it's about time to put some power for it and see if we can get it running uh, this is a much later Cold War era one so it's been condensed down to a much smaller unit compared to the original uh, size panel there which had the uh, heater element power supply the Vener auto whaler for testing which we went through in the last video and then you had the main uh, fuse distribution panel and the main isolator switch for the incoming cables um, all of that by this point in the cold war had been condensed down to this one unit here so when this arrived it had no keys on it but luckily the uh, key numbers were stamped on the panel there so the uh, fs880 uh, is still available at amazon today so obviously they're still used in some modern panels but the h661 that was a bit harder to find so these key cams were made by a company called cut hammer which is an american company so managed to import a set of keys for about 40 dollars so we can get that running up there so in the uh, normal position we've got the main power supply switched on and the key would have been in a locked on position and a siren would have been in standby ready to receive a signal to uh, start immediately uh, but you could isolate it to the off position there uh, if it was being worked on and then if they wanted to test you could flick the main switch into test mode and put that into the push on so when you press that cam down the siren would sound and as soon as you released it would uh, stop so that was to replace the uh, auto whaler for testing uh, the heater just had the same h661 key there so that was just to isolate the uh, heater control plates if they were being worked on um, and you just had some phase indicator lights there so they would be normally illuminated to let them know that the power was live to the panel okay so we just got the panel open now so we'll just quickly go through what we've got going on inside here luckily we've got the original uh, wiring diagram there which is going to make things much easier and all of the cables are numbered so that's going to make it easy to trace where all of those circuits go as well so the original uh, incoming power supply would have come into the side of this isolator switch here uh, which is just the other side of this red handle and you can see the uh, cam there which would have activated it when the door shut directly above that uh, we've got a bank of three fuses here these are the main incoming fuses so as i say it was 415 volt free phase so we have three live cables coming in hence the uh, three fuses there the ones painted red just next to it that was the siren motor fuses uh, and above that we've got two more banks this one's marked up on the plan as spare so we can see there's nothing coming out of those and on this side we've got the uh, heater control unit and uh, the power supply for the uh, WB1400 just above it uh, you can see there's a nice bank of spare cartridge fuses there so they were there if an engineer came out and one of these fuses had blown um, he already had a selection up there ready to replace them uh, on this side this is the main siren contactor so usually when this panel was live these top three cables here would always be live that's the power going to the siren um, and it would come out of the bottom here into this unit here which is where the actual siren would have connected into so when either the test key switch was activated or the wb1400 activated that contact would, would close and that would allow the power through and down to the siren so that's just a high ampage switch there and just above it this would have done the heater plate elements there and we've got another distribution board up there so that's for uh our bt equipment power supplies and the heater power supplies and just down here that's the main neutral bus there uh on the back of the door so this is just the back of the uh key activation switches and the uh indicator lights there and just on the bottom of the plan we can see it says wb1400 flood receiver so that's how we know this one came off the flood network one of the things that wouldn't have been in that control panel is the thermostat for the uh, heater plates at the end of the siren and that would have been actually in a little box uh, actually up by the siren itself so either at the top of the pole or or on top of the building wherever it was located and it would usually have just been a little box like this and inside what almost looks like a domestic thermostat there uh, that would have been set to one degree celsius so uh, as soon as the temperature dropped below that 
the heater plates would kick in so it was one kilowatt plate on each end and that was just in case if any rain had got between the uh, stators and the rotors obviously when the temperature dropped if that froze it would actually uh, stop the siren from functioning so they were just there for uh, for cold weather so I've got it to the point now where uh, we're ready to start testing some of the functions on this. So originally, like I said, this had a uh, 415 volt three phase supply going to it. And uh, unfortunately, on these premises, we only have a 240 volt domestic supply. So sometimes when I'm doing siren videos, you may notice they run up a bit slower. That's because it's been done on one of these three phase inverters here, uh, which converts 240 to uh, 415 uh but we can do testing on this with uh just a 240 volt supply so uh the obligatory don't try this at home kids um if you're not sure on electrics uh please don't mess around with them make sure you know what you're doing so i've just run a couple of temporary cables down there just for now so usually uh this panel the three phase were coming down the bottom the siren requires three phase to run but the uh some items on it only required 240 volts, so the coil in the contactor there, uh, the heating circuit, the post office or BT equipment, they all only required 240. So the way they did that was we have the three phase coming in here and then some of these fuses at the top are only connected to one of the phases. So that just gives it a 240 volt supply. So what we've done after going through the circuit diagram there, down the bottom, the uh, blue phase is the one that oct uh, activates the contact coil there and the siren test switch is connected to so what we've done we've put a 240 volt supply onto the uh, blue phase there and then connected to the siren output just on the blue phase we've got our little 240 volt siren there so we we'll just put some uh, 240 volt power through to it there so what we should be able to do now uh initially if we just put it into test mode now when we press the uh, button we can just hear the contacts are clicking in in and out inside there so now when we fire that to the on position when we press that we get power to our little 240 volt siren as soon as we let go that cuts down so we know the contact is good in there uh, we know the uh, siren test switch is working uh, so the next thing is we'll swap over the power I think to the red phase um, which had the controls for the heater circuit on it uh, we'll just put 240 volt on there hopefully if the lamp still works on there we should see that come on and we should also hear the uh, contact to click for that and then we know all the functions on this panel are good okay so we've swapped the temporary 240 volt supply over onto the red face side down the bottom there so hopefully that should activate the um, heating circuit on the other side of the panel we'll just get that power back up so again we've been running this on the uh, temporary rcd supply there just to make sure everything's safe and just power that up and there we go so that's everything on this panel seems to be working okay so at some point we'll get it hooked up to a three-phase supply and we'll get one of the big sirens running on it.